If you're new to training, you're going to want to watch this. Hey there, this is Coach Chris Wilson here in the Critical Bench Compound. Today I am going over 13 of my favorite barbell exercises that are really essential to all beginners, anyone just getting involved in weightlifting, weight training uh, on any level. Th these movements are a great introduction, hitting everything. Total body workout here if you're doing all 13 of these movements. So I'm gonna break them down as we go and coach you through each exercise so that you feel comfortable doing them all. And I want this to be uh, very helpful to you and something you can look back at and make sure that you're doing it right. So let's get to these exercises. All right, as you can see here, I am standing with a barbell at my thighs. I'm gonna start with one of my very favorite moves that I've been doing for a long time bent over rows. So when you grab the bar, you wanna grab it at about shoulder width or so. If you wanna go out a little wider or in a little bit, that's totally personal preference right there. I'm gonna grab an over, over grip. You can certainly do underhanded rows as well, but I feel like for this, to put more emphasis on the back, I, I suggest doing more pronated. Okay. You want to take a solid stance, right? Athletic foot position here. The bar is at my thighs, right? And all I'm going to do is I'm going to allow myself to stretch down, maintaining a nice flat back so I can hold this position strong. And then all I'm doing is I'm pulling the barbell into my belly button or my umbilical. Boom. And down. That's it. And down. Notice. My body doesn't change position. I find my spot and I hold it right in to the lower belly. Nice pronate and then when you're done, just stand back up with it or put it on the ground. So you, you can either take, take the weight off of a, a J hook on a power rack or just pull the weight right off the floor. But hold that strong position. You wanna be straight from your butt to the top of your head, pulling that bar in right to the umbilical. Again, if you wanna go palm up and do the same thing, that's fine. Definitely gonna be emphasizing the biceps a bit more there. Both are good. I suggest starting pronated. Let's move on to number two. All right, I have the bar up here at chest height. I'm gonna do an overhead press. I really prefer doing these from a standing position rather than a seated. Seated is fine, like military press style, uh, pressing to the front or the back of the head. But if you want more total body impact, and I, I just, I think overall, um, best uh, benefits for the, for the body, do them standing. So get your bar, so that's at about chest height, right? And then the, the, the thing you wanna be most aware of is that you're, you've created a strong foundation. As you press the weight over your head, you wanna move your body under the weight. So as I press up, I'm coming forward a touch to be balanced and underneath the weight. And then I come back down here. So push, move into it, and then come back. Push, move into the weight, come back. So you're moving underneath the weight. And back, one more. And back. Okay. Ranging it backwards, not always easy, but the reason I say that is because I see a lot of people, beginner level, when they're doing an overhead press, they're almost like they're pushing the weight out in front of them. It's an overhead press, it's an overhead movement. So when you fully extend the arm, your elbow should be like at your ear. Your elbow shouldn't be out in front of your body. That's gonna cause strain on the back, on the neck. It's gonna be very uncomfortable um, and you're just gonna be off balance and, and maybe get yourself into some trouble. So be very aware, work with lighter loads, work up, uh, do you know anywhere from six, probably to eight or 10 reps on that exercise. Do them explosively, powerfully, 
And then I do recommend, you know, starting from this higher position here, but as you get better uh, and, and progress from beginner, maybe to intermediate or advanced, uh, you can start to do a, where you just clean the weight from the floor or grab it from a low position, clean it up to a high position, and then proceed to do your overhead press. But for starters, I'd say grab the bar from up high so you can just focus on your, your overhead press and, um, and rack it safely. Let's move on to number three. Okay, so for number three, I have, of course, the barbell squat. So to safely get the bar on your back, come underneath the weight. If you need a bar pad, go for it. I don't like them. I don't like how they feel. I like to feel the iron right on, on my upper traps there. Make sure that you're holding the bar so that it's in a comfortable spot on your back, not too high on your neck, not too low, and boom. You know, if you, get, if you do them enough, it just feels right when you, when you take the, the weight off the rack. Get a good foot position. Wider is smarter and better initially. And then you can play around if you wanna do, you know, close stance and stuff like that. But try to go wider, flare the toe out just a, a touch. And as you drop down, spread those knees out. So those knees are going out nice and wide. You wanna be able to hold that bottom position and then right up, nice and strong, right? So again, sink down into it, pushing those knees out nice and wide, right? And then right up, okay? Let's do a few more clean reps here, ready? Push those knees out, sitting into it, chest up nice and high, eyes are out on the horizon. One more. Then they gotta walk it backwards to safely rack the weight. Squats look different no matter where you go, right? Sometimes you just see people who have a lot of strength, but not a lot of skill, not a lot of good form. And um, you can get away with a lot when you're younger. I know I wasn't you know, doing pretty looking squats when I was in my early 20s, but I was strong. So you want, you want to be somewhere in the middle there, right? strong, but always working on your form, on your technique, learning from others, watching how others do it. But the tips I just gave you, keeping that chest up, keeping your eyes out forward, not looking straight up in the air. Um, just, you know, sink down into it and just work with manageable loads until you really get a nice clean looking rep there. And try and stick somewhere in that like six to 10 rep range, I would say, unless you really wanna just go crazy with lighter weights and, and do the higher reps. All right, let's move on to number four. Okay, number four, truly my favorite exercise in the gym. Wasn't always, but it became my favorite, the deadlift. Traditional deadlift. There are a lot of varieties of deadlifts. I'm gonna go over kind of a more conventional or traditional deadlift. Uh, there's sumo and, you know, there's obviously there's stiff leg deadlifts. And, Romanian deadlifts, there's lots of different kinds. I'm sticking kind of with the basics here. The deadlift is probably the greatest exercise for stimulating all the muscles of the body at the same time. So I like to take a nice tight stance, okay? My feet are roughly hip width apart, not shoulder width, not that wide. I like to go hip width, okay? Now the key here is the hip hinge, right? You've probably heard that before, but if you're new, maybe you haven't. The hip hinge is where all our power comes from in athletics, any, any high performance uh, you know, movement. It, it's that, it's the, the center of the body. The center of the body is where all the magic, all the power happens, right? So that's where you're, you're maximizing the hip hinge at the bottom of the deadlift. So you're really sitting your hips back, right? Keeping the lower leg very vertical, okay? There might be a little bit of play there in the lower legs for sure, but you really wanna try to emphasize from the knee to the feet that the lower part of the leg stays pretty upright. All the, the bending really is kind of coming from the hips, okay? So my, my, my hand position, pretty much just let your arms hang nice and long. That's where you're grabbing the bar. 
don't try to grab it out here. That's not going to help you. Keep the, the arms fairly straight. As you go up in weight, you can certainly go mixed grip to help you hold on to the bar. But I like to get, uh, stay pronated whenever possible. Okay. The bar is up against the shins. Notice that my hips are way back. I'm, I'm loading the muscle right now. So it's like a rubber band pulling for, on the back of my legs, right? A lot of strength, a lot of power from here. And I'm just like standing up with the weight. That's it. Stand vertically. Don't arch. Don't look up at the heavens. You want to look forward, horizon, right? So you're here. And then same thing going back. The bar just moves vertically. Just up against the body, maximize the hip hinge on the way down. Again, boom, back down, boom, back down. Notice the body position, right? From my hips to my head, crown of my head, pretty straight. So I kind of pass the, the three point test, hips, shoulders, head. I kind of make a nice straight line. That's what really you want to be looking like. You want to be here at the bottom, here halfway, here at the top. No arching. Work with manageable loads. Get good at like 100 pounds. Move up to 150, 200 pounds. You'll be amazed at how much weight you can pull off the ground when you're setting yourself up with good foot position, good hip hinge, preloading, getting those hamstrings right. You get to the top. You're firing all those back muscles, all those muscles in your arms. Again, one of my favorite exercises of all time. Let's move on to the next one. All right, so transitioning from deadlifts to shrugs. Now the upper traps you are hitting when you're doing deadlifts. In fact, if you do, if you have a really good deadlifting session on a particular day, you can absolutely feel those, those upper traps like from the previous day. And I love that feeling. It's a great feeling to have those, those back muscles really talking to you in a good way. So this is a, 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 a really good way to do your shrugs. A lot of people do, they, I mean, you can pile on some weight with shrugs because there's not a lot of movement in a shrug, but you can still see these done wrong quite a bit. Take a comfortable grip. Again, no sense in grabbing way out here or too tight. You want to take about a shoulder width grip go over, over, okay? And all you're really wanting to do is try to keep the, the chin in place. So you don't, you're not moving the head around. You're just trying to elevate the shoulders and then lower. The bar is up against the body the whole time. So just elevate and down. Sometimes people try to pull back a little bit, like squeeze and down, but try to keep the jaw relaxed. Maybe put the, your tongue on the roof of your mouth and down. It's a small movement. Shrugs are great because they stimulate a lot of muscles that you need in other lifts. Up and down. Let's do one more. And down. You can do, like I said, quite a bit of weight with this particular exercise, people, you know, 275, 315, 365, uh, you know, whatever kind of weight you're comfortable holding, you can probably shrug or feel like you're shrugging. Uh, but this obviously is really good for helping with your deadlifts, with getting to the top of the deadlift and holding that weight, right? Uh, there, you know, if you want to get better at doing cleans, we're not touching on cleans in this video, but uh, it helps with that. It helps with your squat. Having really strong traps uh, helps for where that bar sits on your upper back. So there's a lot of reasons to do the shrug and it's a good exercise to do. You can even start with the shrug just to start to activate all those gripping muscles. You know, it's great. Again, I didn't even talk about that. Your grip strength. Shrugs are fantastic at just increasing your forearm grip strength, right? So uh, a really cool barbell exercise. It's kind of under the radar and, and missed by a lot of people, I think, but easily just put three to five sets of shrugs in, in your back workout or, or uh, even on a chest day or something in between chest movements. Okay, let's move on to barbell curls. All right, moving on to the barbell curl. Every guy likes a barbell curl, right? 
But there's a way to screw this exercise up, right? <laughs> Just like there is with everything. So get onto the bar here so it's up against the thighs. You wanna, again, grab it about shoulder width apart. Not necessarily in here, not necessarily out here. Again, most times when you grip the barbell, you wanna be gripping it at a comfortable distance that is, you know, kind of lines up with where your arms hang naturally, okay? So we're, we're grabbing it here. We're standing nice and tall. Okay, now I will say this. When you're um, working with, you know, lighter to moderate loads, you should absolutely just be focused on, you know, tightening the triceps at the, at the bottom of the exercise so you're getting good full length and stretch in the biceps, squeezing up, and then lowering under control, right? So this is what a good barbell curl looks like. It's like one second up and like three to four seconds on the eccentric. If you start to work with heavier weight, you know, weight that's pushing you for five, six, seven reps, then, you know, sometimes you're gonna get kind of some of that body English, some of that hip movement into it. And, you know, people call those cheat reps. There's so, still something to be said for working with a heavier weight that gets you, your biceps working harder, but maybe your form isn't as perfect. Um, but it doesn't have to be perfect for it to impact the muscle. Try to stay fairly strict, mostly working with weights that are light to moderate and getting really good negatives. But like I said, on occasion, if you wanna amp up the weight a little bit and let the body move a little bit in order to get those reps, uh, it's okay to, to go a little heavy now and again. All right, here we go, moving on. All right, moving on, I'm on the bench now. First exercise where I'm actually sitting on a bench, and yes, this is the flat barbell bench press. I'm gonna lay down. This is an essential movement for the body. Certainly if you wanna get stronger and you wanna do all the big compound lifts, this is one of the ones, right? You wanna take a good, comfortable grip outside shoulders, okay? And use that, band, that, that line on the bar whether that's on your ring fingers or your, uh, your middle finger or your index finger, somewhere that's in a comfortable position for you. And then what you wanna do is you wanna really squeeze the shoulder blades together underneath you, okay? Create a strong foundation. Have your feet flat to the ground. So you're creating a very sturdy base to bench from, okay? Keep your head down. Bring the bar off so that the arms are straight. As you lower the bar, let the elbows drive down towards the floor and explode upward, okay? Down, explode. So this is getting obviously the chest, the front of the shoulders. This is getting the triceps. The, the bench press gets a lot of, of muscle. What you also wanna make sure is that the wrists are not getting overly worked. Try to keep your wrists locked so that the weight is really sitting in the kind of in the palm comfortably and then the fingers wrap around keep your thumbs wrapped around the bar drive down power up touch that bar to the nipple area explode up rack it back that is how you do the barbell bench press uh, effectively Certainly you'll see a lot of bodybuilders really flare the elbows out wider to try and hit more just strictly pec. But if you really, if you're, if you're benching for, for power, for performance, for production, I would say to more tuck the elbows so that as your elbows come down, they're more kind of driving in towards the body rather than out wide. Try to kind of almost like you're turning or rotating your elbows in and they come down. That's how power lifters bench, and that's where you get more power, more strength, and frankly, I feel it's a lot safer on the shoulder. That's my opinion on it. Anyway, let's move along. All right, very similar to a standard flat bench press is the close grip press. I wanted close grip to be part of this video because it's a, a terrific way to build up strength 
uh, in those triceps and lockout strength, namely, so which will really benefit you in standard press, uh, uh, you know, overhead presses or standard bench uh, bench press. So getting those triceps stronger and getting your elbows to really hug uh, against the body. So this is what a close grip looks like. So you want to be, you know, if you're using a standard uh, bar you're going to have some different lines here on the bar. So this line here is a good indicator of approximately where to position the hands, whether it's your pinkies or your ring finger on that line. You want to be in fairly tight. Again, same positioning, good strong base, bring the bar up over the body, wrists are straight, and then as the bar comes down towards the chest, the elbows drive in close to the body and explode up. Okay, again, drive in close towards the body. You might be just south of the nipple line on this, which is also fine. Power up. Down. Close grip bench press, primarily for triceps, but of course you're still getting anterior delt and your pecs, of course. But that will help with lockout strength, with beefing up the other side of the arm which if you have a nice, big, strong tricep, that'll add girth and size to your entire arm and make you a better bench, uh, bench presser. Let's move on. Okay, so the next exercise is one that I know some people uh, maybe don't do because maybe they have shoulder issues, uh, tight shoulders, or they're dealing with some type of you know, old injury. Uh, I like upright rows with light to moderate weight. It's a, it's a cool way to hit the shoulders, to hit the upper back, the, the traps in a, um, a, a different kind of way. There are different ways to do them. You can do them with cables, with dumbbells, with a kettlebell, but I still do like more traditional upright rows. You're going to take a slightly cl closer grip on these, so you're not going to be out, out this wide. Not typically, anyway. I like to bring the, the grip in a little bit, a little bit closer to like hip width. Okay, so hips are here. So this is about where I like to grab the bar. And from here, you're just standing nice and strong and then you're pulling the bar to pretty much the top of your chest under the chin area, leading with the elbows. So boom, just like this. So the elbows kind of drive up into the air and the bar comes to like the top of the chest. I'll do one more. Stand nice and, you know, let those knees bend a little bit so you're not locking out. Stand comfortably. When you pull up, you know, this can, should kind of be your top position here with that bar. So the bar is kind of hitting right at about the nipple line and those elbows are kind of up into the air. You're getting that upper back, those traps, those rear delts, those upper back muscles are engaged and working. Again, stay with lighter to moderate weight. Play around. If you don't like the barbell, then try it with dumbbells. Try it with a cable. Try it with a kettlebell. Try some different apparatus to do that move. That move. But I do like it in addition to doing things like your shrugs and your bent over rows. Another cool way to hit some of those posterior muscles, strengthen the shoulders, because so much of what we're doing is always push, push, push. It's good to get more of these pull exercises into our, uh, into our repertoire. Okay, moving on. All right, I have the bar back up high. We're gonna put the bar on our back like we're gonna do a squat, but notice I got lighter weight here. So what I'm going to be doing here, one of those exercises you don't see a lot anymore, it's a good morning. The key to a, to a good, good morning is that your bar position and your range of motion uh, works for you, okay? So make sure that that bar is not up on your neck. Do not let it go to your neck. You'll be so uncomfortable. You'll be in pain. It won't feel right and do, do not go too heavy and do not go too low. Okay, so stay with, this is a really great posterior 
uh, exercise. This is hitting all those muscles in the back side of the body, right? It's getting your back, it's getting your hamstrings, it's getting your glutes, it's getting your erectors uh, in the low back area. So what you wanna do is you wanna, as you, again, this is that hip hinge. As you're bending, you're just pushing the hips back, 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 and your head stays in line with your body. Driving your hips back, and then boom, right back up. Keep your weight, absolutely keep your weight on your heels, but if you even feel your toes lift a little bit, that's normal, because you really wanna feel grounded and like your hips are really going back. Maximize the stretch in the hamstrings, and then come back up. But work with your own limitations. Know how low you should be going, know how much weight you should be working with, and keep that bar position comfortable. Boom. Love good mornings for strengthening those muscles on the back side of the body. Like I said, because so many of us, especially beginner level, we like to do what we can see. So we like to do a lot of pushing. We like to do a lot of exercises for the muscles that we can see in the mirror. It's hard to see the, the stuff going on in the back of our body, but that's the foundation. That's, that's what creates a good sturdy base for all these other pushing movements that we like to also be doing. So absolutely do some good mornings. Start with just the bar and then work up from there. Okay, let's move on. All right, so now we are doing a lunge, a barbell lunge. This exercise is very important that you go maybe just with the bar initially and then put some tens on each side and build up from there. Um, this exercise, obviously there's a lot of balance involved and you can be vulnerable if you're trying to do this with too much weight. So start light, get accustomed to what it feels like to have weight on your back while you're doing a lunge, okay? So this is, I only have 65 pounds on here, not a lot of weight, but you know, be very sure-footed, and I would recommend initially just doing all on one, you know, do all one side before maybe transitioning to the other. So I'm gonna step out with my right, I'm gonna take a nice step, I'm gonna come down safely, and then push back. I'll go again, right foot, down safely, push back. I'll go again, push back. Don't slam that back knee into the ground. Be really smart about it. Left leg, here, trying to go nice and slow for you. Here, push back, push back, okay? Now, as you, as you get a little bit more comfortable, you can, you, know, you can do the right, left, right, left. Now notice as I'm doing those, my body position, you know, my hips up stays pretty much the same. I'm not bending or moving um, around I'm keeping, you know, a really good posture. And that's really important with all these exercises is the posture that you're taking throughout the lift, from the hips to the head. You wanna always pretty much have that chest up. You wanna always kinda have the eyes out on the horizon. Uh, you know, just, just keeping tight through your middle, through your core, to stabilize what, you know, that the fact that you're working with free weight, okay? You don't have a machine taking on the, the brunt of the, the stabilization that's required. Your body is stabilizing you. And so you wanna take, you know, sure steps. You wanna be really tight, really engaged, really thinking, that mind-muscle connection always. And, you know, again, start light, work up from there. You're not gonna impress anybody by going heavy and the rep looks like crap and then you hurt yourself. Nothing to be impressed by that. So if you're a beginner, you know, use lighter loads, build up, get better, get some years under you, then you're setting yourself up for a lot of success even at, at, at a young age. Uh, so it just, it's a great exercise, really good for um, just overall athletic performance. You can start to integrate some lateral lunges. There's lots of different ways to do those. So great exercise, let's move on. Okay, step ups. This exercise, uh, very similar in terms of your approach uh, compared to, to the lunge. You're doing a step, uh, a single leg movement, and you have weight on your back. Start light, 
be sure-footed. Don't go too high with your step. As you, you notice, I have about probably about an eight inch step here, which is a, probably a good starting point if you have lighter, you know, lighter, lighter amount of weight. Just to get up nice and, and close to the step, put one foot on there. Okay, again, good posture, elbows down, bars resting comfortably on the back, and then just use that top leg to do the work. Push and back down. Push, so my left leg is, is the working leg for this exercise right now. Back down, I'm gonna switch. Now my right leg is the working leg. And back down. Step. Step. Okay? So obviously not a super complicated exercise by any means, but a good exercise to do. Uh, start with eight inches, maybe go to 12. You can build up 16, 18. You know, you can have a pretty, pretty good step. Probably try to max out at like where your knee or your hip is at 90 degrees, right? And that's probably high enough with load on your back to do a step. Keep it six, eight, 10 reps per side. And great exercise for overall leg development. The higher you go, the more you start to get the hamstring and the glutes involved. The lower you are, the more you're activating your quad, okay? Uh, but good overall leg builder, okay? Let's move on. All right, number 13. Now we're hitting the arms again, the triceps, arm extension or skull crushers, you may have heard them called. This is just a lying barbell arm extension exercise for isolating the triceps. You can use a standard barbell like this, or you can use the, short, the shorter version. Uh, it's good to get comfortable at doing these with a straight bar versus always using an easy bar or cambered bar. Take a comfortable grip on these. Again, always in good position, feet flat on the ground. Arms are straight at the top, and all you're doing is coming down towards the nose, towards the forehead, and extending the arms upward. So the elbows point towards the ceiling, boom, right up. Arm extension or elbow extension. Comfortable, boom. You can lightly come in contact with the forehead. They even call these nose breakers sometimes. But it's a great exercise for gaining some strength, some arm strength that, you know, the arm lockout strength that, that's so vital to any of your pressing movements and fully developing that arm. You don't want to do too many curls and not, not, not enough extension exercises. So definitely do that. Do all 13 of these exercises. Incorporate them somehow into your workout program that you're following. Be sure to make sure you're doing them right, working with lighter to moderate loads. Get a spotter when necessary get pictures or video of you doing the exercise. That's always very helpful if you train with somebody else. Have them get some footage of you so that you can watch yourself doing the lift and work on tweaking your form and perfecting your form. Thanks so much for watching. Thank you so much for watching the Critical Bench YouTube channel. Be sure to give us a thumbs up. Leave us some comments or questions. Click that subscribe button for more videos from us. Check out this amazing five best core killer exercises report and another video from us right there. We'll see you soon.